Hey everybody, final thoughts time for paperback. And before I have anything to say, let's hear what Jen has to say. Right, I just wanted to say, I do have some thoughts about this game. And the main thing is that um, you probably all know that we got into board gaming because we had a, a trip oh. and we wanted to have a, a something to do in the evenings. And he went looking for Travel Scrabble and fortunately got directed to Pandemic instead, which we very, very much enjoy. And we have subsequently bought Travel Scrabble and found out actually we don't enjoy it. It's just not um, a good good fit for us. So a word game like this, which is very Scrabbly oriented, um, I wasn't thinking that I would like, but actually I do. I like it very much. And the reason is, I think, because we can play cooperatively. And mm. I think that the wild cards and the little goal things and the art, of course, I really like. It just seems very clever. And actually, we didn't read you any of these these book covers, but they're very clever as well. So I just wanted to say that actually if we had been directed towards this as a first game, we probably would have still gotten to board gaming. Um, whereas I think if we had gotten stuck with Travel Scrabble, it would have been something we did because we were on the trip and we you know, had to do something, but we probably wouldn't have continued on with board gaming at that point. So I think this is a great intro, um, much better than Travel Scrabble. How would you feel about this if it didn't have the co-op game? I still enjoy it without the co-op, actually. Okay. Yeah. But you like it better with. I like it better with. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I think that is the most Jen has actually um, verbalized about her feelings about any game, period. Uh, it's a big breakthrough here today for you guys. And, um, but there's plenty more to say about Travel Scrabble. Oh, there. Dick about paperback. I have nothing to say about travel, Scrabble, other than that it's really hard to say that repeatedly over and over again. I think Jen, she's going to take the Beagles for a walk now. We're walking. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's talk a bit about paperback. Actually, uh, to start talking about paperback, I actually have to start by talking about a website. I mean, I'm sorry, I should have actually gotten it up before I started this. That would have been smart, huh? Let's see. Hold on a second. There we go. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So this is a website called, you're out of here, over there, the Geeky Gimp. Um, it's run by a girl named Erin who is, you know, she's a college student. You know, she's a regular blogger about all things geek. Uh, and, you know, she suffers from muscular, muscular dystrophy and scrolls. She, she's basically Will Wheaton, if Will Wheaton was a girl with uh, scoliosis and is still in college and stuff like that. She's uh, very prolific and she writes a lot of really interesting articles and reviews about you know TV shows and video games and board games and has a very unique perspective about it, of course. You're asking, what does this have to do with paperback? Well, as it turns out, Erin, um, Erin Hawley, was one of my backers on Kickstarter and she actually backed at the co-host level. And so I contacted her after the Kickstarter campaign and said, well, hey, what do you want to co-host with me? And she had just gotten paperback she was really excited about it and I asked well how do you want to do it you want to do it on Skype you want to do a you know a Google Hangout and she said actually she wanted to do something a little bit different so what she's done is she's written up her own review of uh, paperback on her site and I've got it open here now and she also did an interview with me uh, you know just talking about my background and so we talked a bit about video games and whatnot now that uh, interview with me is on her site geek geekygimp.com as is her review and I figured you know so we're gonna co-hosting I would actually just open up her review right now and maybe talk about some of the stuff she thought about the game so we're kind of having a uh, you know a uh, a one-on-one -on -one. and of course then Jen jumped in as well because she decided she would actually fulfill part of her Kickstarter requirement by um, helping me out with the Kickstarter as well. So this is a very Kickstarter related run through. Sorry that was a lot of build up to start talking about the game. But I mean well for starters I, I gotta say I mean everything Jen said I agree with. It's a fantastic game. I had high hopes for it. The designer's previous game Walkstar was a really really cool original innovative game. You know it was kind of a real-time action board game before those kind of became hot and in 
vogue like they are now. And this is a really, really cool game. Does a great job of meshing deck building and wordplay. Really, really fantastic. And um, I think the other stuff Jen talked about, it is all the little, you know, the things that set it apart. You know, the, the fact that it has so many cards that are multiple letters or so many cards that have special powers that make it a much more interesting puzzle trying to come up with words rather than just saying, oh, here's some vowels and consonants. Let's see what I can come up with. You know, trying to ensure that, okay, well, I got to end with this letter and I got to start with this letter, you know, makes it a lot more interesting. And then having, you know, special goals that will get you special abilities and all that is great. And then we love the co-op. We think the co-op is absolutely fantastic. Now, let's see, uh, Aaron, she, let's see, you know, spoiler alert for her article, you know, she, oh, she loved the art and I gotta agree, this art is amazing. It's really, really gorgeous. There, basically, it's on all these different, um, the, uh, the goal cards, the victory point cards, and they all represent the various books that the heroine of the game the writer Paige Turner, that is her name, that she is writing, and we're actually helping her write these books by trying to put words together. It's a very loose theme. The theme is hardly there at all. This is basically an abstract word game, but it's still, as a, it, it's, I wouldn't call it a game theme so much as like um, game fluff, game trappings. It, you know, it, it's, it's an artistic theme that is gorgeous throughout, and it really gives a real sense of fun to the game. So Aaron liked that. Oh, and yeah, this box is fantastic. Uh, what other game does this? Uh, the uh, Eaten by Zombies is another game that has this same kind of deck builder with like all the, you know, the divider cards built in. Really, really great. You know, just rife for expansions. Very nicely done. And, you know, and it's a great gateway game. And again, you know, Jen agrees. I agree. You could play this game with anybody. I think it'd be a really great way. I mean, you know, everybody's familiar with Scrabble. Everybody's comfortable with Scrabble. And so you could use this as a gateway building off of that and, you know, introducing them to games that maybe they aren't necessarily any richer thematically, but are definitely richer in terms of play space because there's so many cool surprising twists that you'll have playing this game. Now Aaron had a few complaints and I think they're all valid. Um, you, know, and, you know, on a whole, she wants to very, uh, you know, make it very, very clear. She likes the game, but if I recall, oh, she she had some issues with the rule book, and actually, I think the rule book's fine. I think I disagree with Aaron a little bit on this. I didn't really have any problems with it, although I guess actually I, I, I will. I, okay, I take it back. I will kind of agree with her because if there's one thing that's kind of a problem with the rule book, it's that there are certain things that are left unsaid. Like the biggest, most damning one that I think a lot of people have a problem with is what is the rule for challenging? people. There is no rule. And I, th I think the rules just kind of assume a very, very friendly game where everybody can just say, well, is that a word? I don't think that's a word. Well, let's just go look it up. As opposed to the more hardcore Scrabble, I challenge you. If that word is wrong, you lose your turn. Ha 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 ha. You know, this game doesn't seem to have that. And for me and Jen, that's fine. I don't think we really miss that. But I do every once in a while find myself wondering, oh, wait a minute, can I put an apostrophe between this N and this T on this card? And the rule doesn't really provide any kind of guidelines for that. You really kind of have to decide for yourself, and I really would prefer, I mean, I think the rules themselves are well written, but I guess they're a little bit incomplete. There are some odd little things. They're, they're not game breakers. It is unfortunate that you run into them, but still, it's not the end of the world. So actually, point to Aaron, that was, I, I was about to argue with her, but then she convinced me through her words. And, you know, it's actually a very well written article, plus you got to come here to see the interview with me. Let's see. Now, um, what else? Oh, yeah, and, and she kind of bags on the theme, or the lack thereof, and you know, you know Guilty. It's it is a themeless game, but it's a word game. I, I don't really think that's a big a deal. Um, it, but um, oh, she doesn't like the attack cards. Now, Jen and I, we didn't demonstrate these at all. There are a set of attack cards you can add to the game if you want. Let me see if I can pull them out here. Uh, you know, and basically they just they, you know there's different value ones. They go into the deck and they become new cards. You can like um, the, this letter B attack um, negative one dollar for each a card in hand. Attack, cannot use letters that cost eight cents or more. Attack, uh, you know, cannot buy anything over eight cents. So these are cards that when they're in your hand, if you end up using them in a word, you can choose one of your opponents and hit them. And again, I gotta agree with Aaron. I mean, I, I understand why they're there. I understand why they're included. There are players who really want that, what they consider to be interaction. They really want to be able to hit each other. And, you know, fair enough, they're there for that. I don't think Jen and I would ever use these attack cards. The rules, in fact, actually suggest don't use the attack cards until you've really become familiar with the game. I don't think we would ever use them because, well, not only are they just mean, but they can tailor into another problem. You know, the, the bigger, the biggest issue that Aaron raises, and it's entirely true, it's a really big issue, and a lot of people I've seen on Board Game Geek 
week have, have expressed a similar concern, analysis paralysis. You actually saw it, particularly in the extended video, if you watched that. I mean, you can, towards the end of this game, you can get such hugely complex hands of cards with all kind of, okay, well, I gotta do this, and I really wanna do this, and if I play this next to this, it'll turn that into a wild card, and all kinds of crazy stuff. And trying to figure out the best word you can get out of that can really just do your head in, in a big way, in a much bigger way than Scrabble ever could. No matter how many letters you find on that little wooden tray in front of you, no matter what the board looks like, this game can really just, just, you know, and now, it's, it's not like you're not having fun. I mean, it's, it's a fun, cool puzzle to solve every time you run into one of these, but it can be a real problem for everybody else around the table. Now, and the problem with the attack cards is, hey, you know what, maybe I've got this big complicated thing, but you know, at least while everybody else was taking their turn, I could be thinking about what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try this, and I'm gonna try that, and hey, maybe I even found the right word, but then somebody attacks me, and suddenly, all of a sudden, boom, now my situation just got more complicated, it's gonna take me even longer. So my problem with the attack cards, well, I, I, don't, I don't begrudge them, I know a lot of people want them, but I think they have the potential to make an already AP prone game even more AP prone. And that is a problem. However, I will disagree with Aaron about the problems of uh, uh, analysis paralysis, AP, you know, just getting too bogged down and not being able to make a decision. Because I think the brill the game solves this in two brilliant ways. One is the co-op game. Jen, I love this co-op game. If I can't figure it out, I just open it up and, you know, we work together. And, you know, every turn we are working together to try and solve, and it's so much fun. We have such a great time. I think that's probably one of the things that elevates for us over Scrabble or whatnot, that we can work together to solve these problems. And it's, it's such a simple little variant. It plays nice and easy. We've yet to win, but we always feel like, gosh darn it, we should be able to find a word here. And um, you know, so we always feel like it's our fault, not the game's fault. So it's really, really nicely done. That's one way, because there can be no AP if you're working together on everybody's hand. But even in the competitive game, I think, now they list it as a variant you can play, but the optional rule for bounty is so important, I think you gotta play with it. Because, you know, the notion of, okay, I've got all these cards, and I've come up with a word, but I know there's a better word here. Now, I could spend the next 10 minutes staring at these cards and putting everybody else to, to boring them to tears, trying to figure out the word, or I can open it to the table and let everybody help me find the right word. And they are incentivized, because whoever amongst all my opponents finds the best word, if I, if I end up using their word, they basically get a dollar they can spend any time they want. And that is a huge, big deal. And, um, you know, I could say, and it's in everybody's best interest to use this, because if I just can't find the word, okay, I guess I'll go for six dollars or six cents off of this, but geez, hey, can anybody find something better than six? Oh, nine cents? I can do nine cents? Here, take, you know, get a dollar. And you know, so everybody wins. It's brilliant. And now I would have I would have added one more thing to the rules to um, you know to, to add to the bounty. I would suggest that if you find yourself playing this game with people who do really get bogged down, every time it comes around, it takes them five minutes to figure out what they're gonna do, it's totally possible. I would suggest introducing a timer variant where you know, you know, there is a timer, you only get to spend 30 seconds, a minute, whatever is you know good for your group. And if somebody has not locked in their word in that time frame, the bounty, is, you know, it's not an optional thing. They have to open up the bounty. So at most, while everybody else is figuring out their words, you know, I've got 30 seconds, I've got 45 seconds to figure out my word, and if not, then everybody can help. And then it becomes a huge competition amongst all the players. Everybody's involved trying to earn that bounty. I think it's brilliant. Um, you know, word, uh, you know, word, um, uh, you know, word game Scrabble suffers this too. Games, you know, the, of these sort of the carrying these really complex puzzles can create huge AP. I love. I think it's one of the strengths of this game. One of the biggest selling points that they have found a way to fight AP, and I think it's just absolutely amazing. I was gobsmacked when I was reading the rules about that, and they just kind of mentioned, oh, by the way, there's a little bounty thing, and it immediately it was obvious to me. This is the savior of word games. That bounty is so smart. I love it. So anyway, you know, so that's a, 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 a and I understand why Erin, she mentioned she played with her mom and it could be a real problem for them. I strongly recommend to Erin, I strongly recommend to anybody playing this game, play the bounty. And if, if, 
I can imagine really competitive players, they might say, well, I'm not going to open a bounty. I'll just spend five minutes figuring out this word. And if you play with people like that, put a timer that, that forces the bounty up. I mean, heck, you could even say that if I'm at the beginning of my turn, if I'm not ready to go, I had everybody else's turn to figure out what I'm going to do. And if I'm not ready to go, I have to go to bounty immediately. I think you'll find a very fun, very interactive game where everyone is really involved in everybody else's turn. And it just ratchets this game up to 11. It's so brilliant. Okay. so. Um, and I think those are the main points that uh, Aaron hit. Yeah, then it's the, the big interview with me. She even took screenshots of me and, and put me on. It was very, very nice. Very, very well produced. It was a nice little interview, too. I mean, I got to talk about making video games and stuff like that. Um, so, thank you, Aaron, for um, you know co-hosting this run-through of... of uh, paperback with me. Uh, now, if people would like to actually go check out, I should, I should say the show notes list the link to this interview Aaron's done with me. Her website, though, is geeky, it's hard to say, geekygimp.com. And it's a great site. She's got some really nice, I was reading, um, before I started doing this, I was reading one of her articles uh, about Star Trek Next Gen episodes. Really nicely done. A, you know, Great, great gal producing great content with a really unique voice or a really unique point of view. Um, and actually, she just aced her finals too. Congratulations, Aaron. Now, there's one more bit of business got talked about, or two more business. One, first of all, sorry, I don't know what's going on, folks. Every time I try to do these um, external static cams, this camera seems to keep eating the extended playthroughs. I'm trying to recover it off the memory card now, but I don't know if I can get it off. But anyway, you still at least you get the main gameplay as static cam. Um, so, Sorry about that. I'll, I don't know what's going on. Uh, topic number two, getting this game. This game is sold out. It is out of print. You cannot get this game. So it's kind of unfair for me to be doing a run through because uh, it was a Kickstarter campaign. It um, you know, basically sold through. It didn't go into the retail channel, at least not in any significant fashion. You can't really get a copy of this game anymore. However, if I have piqued your interest, if Jen has piqued your interest, if Aaron has piqued your interest in paperback, I've got some good news. Go to www.paperbackgame.com, one word, paperbackgame.com. The designer, Tim, is basically, he's not necessarily doing a Kickstarter, he's doing a Kickstarter-like campaign on his own, where he is basically taking pre-orders for a second print run. And once he gets 500 pre-orders, he will go on ahead and make the second print run happen, and everybody's going to be able to get to enjoy this great game that we just demoed for you. So, um, you know, definitely go check it out. You know, put in your pre-order. I, I, I don't know what the particulars are, money-back guarantees or anything like that, but you can check the website. But gosh, if this... This is a wonderful game. It's a lovely, fits inside a box. Great, great introduction to de deck building. A, a better introduction to deck building in a lot of ways than Dominion is. Fun, fun game. Can play with just about anybody. And really bold, innovative, you know, turns word games on their head in, in several ways. L you know, love cooperative, the idea of a cooperative word game that plays well together. This is one of our favorite cooperative games now, I would say. Love the notion of a competitive word game where you are just as involved in your opponent's turn as your own. Brilliant, brilliant stuff is paperback. And I think I'm going to stop there again. Paperback game, all these links are in the show notes below. But I'm going to stop right there and say have a very nice day. Sorry um, that Jen and I waffled quite a bit. I thought we were going to do better. But it's Jen just, she's been doing glass work all day. She said afterwards, oh, I was just so creatively exhausted after, you know, creating stuff all day long, like, you know, these beautiful markers she makes. She just couldn't bring her A game. And I don't have an A game when it comes to word games. But anyway, folks, that was it. Thanks for watching. Comment, questions, concerns, errors, you know the drill. Let me know. And otherwise, I hope you have a very nice day. Talk to you later. Have a good, good day. Bye-bye.